Hey Jaywalkers, 2022 is here. Happy New Year. I know you're excited for the opportunities and the things that God has for you this year. One of the things that we try to do at the start of every January is called the Daniel Fast. And so I'm going to talk to you about the Daniel Fast today. Another thing we like to do is to ask God for a word. So maybe it's a single word, maybe it's like a phrase of words. My word for last year was the same as my wife, it was miracle and God did not let down. He showed us a lot of miracles in this past year and did some amazing things. I'm praying for what my word's gonna be for 2022 and I'd ask you to join and do the same thing. But on January 3rd, starting on the 3rd, that's tomorrow, Monday morning, we are going to begin the Daniel Fast. And so, I wanna encourage you to join along with us in that, but in case you don't know what it is or don't know what it comes from in the Bible, Lance talked a little bit about it last week and I'm gonna give you a little bit more information this week from the book of Daniel. We're gonna be looking at Daniel chapter one and Daniel chapter 10. So we're gonna jump right in. Daniel chapter one, I'm starting at the very beginning. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. So that's not like a common word that we use, besieged, uh, because countries aren't like coming in and conquering other countries very often anymore. But back in the days of the Bible, that kind of thing happened. And the prophets had been warning Israel that it was going to happen to them for a long time. They'd been saying, you guys got to get your stuff together. Stop sinning against God. Stop doing whatever you feel like doing. There's going to be a kingdom from the north and it's going to come down and it's not going to be good for you. It's going to be bad. You're going to get attacked. You're going to lose. And they were warning them for a long time and the people had a chance to repent and to say they were sorry for the things that they'd done, but they didn't take it and they just kept doing whatever they felt like doing. And so it happened. Babylon came down and they besieged Jerusalem, which meant literally that the city got burned. The, the temple got knocked down, like people were killed, people were injured, like, and then they were taken captive. So. The way that that worked is going to explain in the next few verses. Verse 2. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, that's the king of Judah, into his hand and some of the vessels of the house of God. And he brought them to the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and placed the vessels in the treasury of his God. So this would have been like one of the worst things that could have happened to Jerusalem. The, the sacred things that they had had been taken. They'd been put into a foreign land in a place of foreign gods. And that was so devastating for Israel. Not only had their temple been destroyed, but the sacred things that they held so dear were now taken away to a distant land where they were gonna be in the place of a false god. And then here's what it says. Then the king commanded Ashpenaz, his chief eunuch, to bring some of the people of Israel both of the royal family and of the nobility, youths without blemish, of good appearance, and skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding, learning, and competent to stand in the king's palace, and to teach them the literature and the language of the Chaldeans. So the Chaldeans were the Babylonians. And what basically just happened was their city got destroyed, the Israelites, the Jewish people, and now their best and brightest they're young people, like the up and coming scholars, everybody that was like a somebody, uh, nobility, royal family, like they took their best people and they carried them off in chains, hundreds of miles away to a distant land. And their job there was going to be what it explains next. The king assigned them a daily portion of the food that the king ate and of the wine that he drank. They were to be educated for three years at the end of that time, they were to stand before the king. Among these were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah of the tribe of Judah. And the chief of the eunuchs gave them names. Daniel he called Belteshazzar, Hananiah he called Shadrach, Mishael he called Meshach, and Azariah he called Abednego. So, check out what just happened. The people that were the best and brightest in the land of Israel, in Judah, were taken away to a distant land, basically to be indoctrinated for three years. And they were gonna tell them all kinds of things. They were gonna teach them how to be Babylonian, basically. They were gonna feed them, like wine and dine them, educate them. And at the end of this time, 
They were going to educate these people enough so that they, when they went back to Jerusalem, if they went back, they would be more like the Babylonians and they could go back and kind of carry on the traditions of the people that they just spent all that time with. Uh, they even changed their name. So there's a lot to these verses. And in a way, what's happening in the United States and all around the world is that there's a society who is not necessarily a godly society and they've come in and they're trying to tell you how to be, tell you what to do, indoctrinate you into thinking the way that their government or their leaders think. And this next verse is a key verse, Daniel 1 verse 8. But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he asked the chief of the eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself. So this is the first place that we see kind of an indication that Daniel was going to do something different. He decided, resolved, like in my heart, I am not going to do, I'm not going to allow myself to become like somebody that I'm not. I've learned these things. I know these things. I know who I am and I'm going to stay who I am. And so Daniel resolved not to just become like everybody else, not to just allow the culture around him to change who he was. And this is kind of one of the first things that we see Daniel do in this land to remain faithful to God. And so the way that the story goes, he asks this guy if he can do that. The guy says, sure, you can do that. And then um, he doesn't eat that same food for 10 days. Everybody thought he was going to be worse and like sick after it. But instead, at the end of that time, he's super healthy. A lot of things happen. There's a furnace. There's a lion's den. We know some of those stories in the book of Daniel. They're amazing stories. There's dreams interpreted. And then a long time later, we jump into Daniel chapter 10. And here's what it says. A long time later. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, now a new king, a word was revealed to Daniel, who was named Belteshazzar. And the word was true. And it was a great conflict and he understood the word and he had understanding of the vision. Now, Daniel had been given this opportunity to interpret visions and, and understand things that other people didn't understand. And it kind of led him to the top of the Babylonians, like scholars, basically. He was kind of leading that because he had an uncanny, godly, uh, visionary ability. And then it says, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three weeks. I ate no delicacies, no meat or wine entered my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all for the full three weeks. So that's where the idea of the 21 day fast comes from. The first one was 10 days. This one in chapter 10 is 21 days. And it says, on the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, that is the Tigris, I lifted up my eyes and looked and behold, a man clothed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Uphaz around his waist. So it says his body was like barrel, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes were flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze and the sounds of his words like the sound of a multitude. And I, Daniel alone saw the vision for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great trembling fell upon them and they fled to hide themselves. So I was left alone and saw this great vision and no strength was left in me. My radiant appearance was fearfully changed and I retained no strength. Then I heard the sound of his words as I, and as I heard the sound of his words, I fell on my face in a deep sleep with my face to the ground and behold, a hand touched me and sent me trembling on my hands and knees and said to me, O Daniel, man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright for I now have been sent to you. Those verses are a result of Daniel's faithfulness and obedience. So he decided that he was going to seek God. And it says on the 24th day of the first month, what's crazy to me is we're starting this fast on January 3rd and it ends on January 23rd, the 23rd day of the first month. And the 24th day of the first month is when Daniel had this vision. So the timeline for what he's doing was kind of similar. Maybe it wasn't the exact same months because they had different days and months and timing like that. But I think that's pretty cool. And so we're going to be doing this for 21 days. If the reason that you're doing this fast is to lose weight, then don't do it. 
If the reason why you're doing this fast is to force God to do something for you, then don't do it. We can't manipulate God. We can't change his mind, make him do things. But one thing that I know about God, because I see it in the Bible, is that God responds when we seek him. The Bible tells us all the time to seek God. It tells us to pursue him. It tells us to dedicate ourselves to him, to be faithful to him. And when we do those things, it's not us making God do something, but God responds to those things in faithfulness because he is faithful. And he's looking around the world for somebody who's pursuing and looking for him. And when he finds that person, he blesses them, just like he blessed Daniel. He gave him uncanny ability to interpret dreams, to see things. It was Daniel's heart that wanted to pursue God, that didn't want to get taken in by the culture that he was being exposed to. Because that culture was trying to change him into a person that he wasn't. See, he knew who he was. He knew who his God was. And this culture around him was saying, I want you to be like this. I want you to eat these foods. I want you to do these things. I want you to worship this way. And Daniel had to decide in his heart whether he was going to do it or not. It said he resolved not to eat the king's food and to drink his wine. He said he was going to live a little differently. He lived a life that was set apart. And because of that, his story is the one that we read about today. And as well as those three guys that kind of joined him, uh, that we know by their Babylonian names, but their real names were, were changed. Daniel's wasn't, was it? Did you notice that? we, We still call him Daniel. And the reason is because this guy didn't change. He didn't allow the circumstances, the things around him to change who he was because he knew who he was. And more importantly, the reason he knew who he was is because he knew who his God was. So he pursued his God in the midst of a culture that wasn't chasing God at all. And he had such an impact on that culture. One of the things that we just heard recently at the the Christmas services that we were attending at Calvary, they said that, The reason why the wise men were looking for the star in the first place was probably because of Daniel. Because Daniel had the ear of all the scholars when he became the top scholar. And I'm pretty sure he taught them some of the Jewish traditions and some of the prophecies of the Jewish people to the point that the Eastern wise men, which would have been the scholars of that day, were the ones who saw the star in the sky and came traveling to Jerusalem to see if they could find the baby. That could have been and most likely was because of Daniel years and years, generations and generations previous. And that's just super cool because we can have an impact on generations when we decide that we're not going to live like everyone else. And so ladies and gentlemen, the Daniel fast looks like this. It is us deciding for 21 days that we're going to live different. It's going to be tough. You're not going to want to do it. It involves some terrible things in our worldly cultural eyes, right? Like we got to give up coffee. You've got to be kidding me. Well, I think coffee is not as important as our relationship with God. We got to give up meat. That sounds terrible. I really like meat. It's delicious. But I like God and I want to know what he has to say to me a lot. And I want to pursue him and see what he has. So I'm going to pursue him and see what he has. And if that involves eating only vegetables and fruits and beans and nuts and drinking water, then that's what I'm going to do. So I'm asking you to join me. I'm asking you to see if this really does make a difference because just like we saw in the story of Daniel, it changed things. It gave him things that he wouldn't have otherwise had. It gave him a clearer perception of who he was and who God was. And it it helped him to fight back against a culture that was trying to indoctrinate and change him from who he was to something else. So this fast is something that I'd love for you to join us on. It's not a typical fast. A typical fast is one where you don't eat, or maybe you um, only drink water or don't eat or drink anything. That, that is typically what a fast is. This Daniel fast is more of an abstinence from certain types of foods. Um, and also, as Lance mentioned last week with Kim, it's, it's something else. You can give up something else also. Note that that is not a biblical fast. Biblical fast involves food and giving that up. But it is something that can allow you more time to pursue and seek God and to try and hear from him. What I'm super excited about is what God's going to do through this time in your heart and in your and in your prayer life and in your mind. See, this, this time that we have now should be spent pursuing him. 
reading his word. Get into the Bible and see what it has to say to you. And when we'll do those things, it'll change our lives. So this starts on January 3rd and goes through January 23rd. Remember, Jaywalkers, we're going to be meeting on Tuesday nights now for our Zoom calls instead of Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Information is going to be up on the Instagram page and updated on the website also. So we'd love to see you there. But we're not going to close this time right now without giving you an opportunity to take a step of faith into a relationship with Jesus. Because Jesus is the one that all of this starts with. It's the one that Daniel was looking forward to coming one day. Uh, and that's what his faith was resting in this Messiah one day coming and Jesus came and when he came he changed everything so I want to give you a chance to know him as your Lord and Savior today and what that means is that you put your trust in him instead of yourself it means that you understand that you can't accomplish what he did accomplish already for you which was a life that was sinless and one that he gives to you and offers you his righteousness in exchange for your sinfulness he took that on himself on the cross and so you can accept that gift that he gives you of eternal life today. Just say these words. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for living for me. Thank you for dying for me on that cross. I believe that you did that to cover my sins. There are many, God, and I'm sorry for the things that I've done wrong. And I turn from them today and I turn to you. I want to make you my Lord and Savior. Send your spirit to live inside of me. I'm sorry for those things. And I trust you from this day forward. I'm going to do this fast to try to grow closer to you, Lord Jesus, to try and know you more, God. And so just I pray that you would meet me in this time and that you would see me and respond in love the way that you always do. God, thank you for who you are. Send your spirit in Jesus name. Amen. So if you just prayed that prayer, welcome to the family. You can text the word BOLD to 94000. That lets us know that you made that decision and helps us come alongside you. We'd love for you to do that. And we'd love to see you on Tuesday night this week at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the United States or whatever time that is, wherever you're at. Love you, Jaywalkers. Hope you have a great week. Happy New Year. And I can't wait to see what God does and hear those stories as you fast during this month of January. Love you guys. Bye.